Hey everyone, it's the Sagan from Side to Say, and welcome to today's Shocktober video. And welcome back to Harvester, this weird ass game that was recommended to me. Um, this wasn't the planned video for today, but need a little more time to work on some of the stuff. So, uh, we're doing an extra episode of this this week. So, uh, yeah. So, okay, as I'm recalling, and I haven't touched this since the last time we saw it, uh, we. Oh. Apparently we have an idle animation. That's actually a nice touch for a game like this, considering stuff like that takes up more space. Um, okay, so we are trying to get membership into the lodge uh, that everybody seems to want us to get into, because that might shed some light on what in the hell is going on here. Yeah, why is a blind woman trying to read her mail? Again, we must be dealing with aliens here that have only got like a, a basic impression of of what humans should act like also i i'm pretty sure i saw that last time and i totally didn't catch that it said a blind <laughs> a blind woman. <laughs> or i did see like a blind woman started reading her mail i was like yeah yeah that scans you know sorry son no time to talk neither rain nor sleep nor snow nor hell shall keep the mail from its appointed rounds Photocopy. Don't mumble, son. Can't understand you. Alright, fine. Next well, time you post, don't forget the zip code. Yeah, yeah, I got your zip code right here. Forty one percent off packing peanuts, assorted colors. Like nobody is that excited about mailing things. Even in 1950 or whatever year it's supposed to be. Crushed paper cup with smudged lipstick on. Sorry, that old elementary school song was set to that particular magic tune. That just unlocked a few lyrics in my head. Alright, let's go back to... The Potsdam residence. Let's see what uh, Stephanie... Uh, Stephanie has any... Uh, let's see, this is in the bathroom, so I think this is her room. Yeah. Steve, it's good to talk to you, but if we're going to escape this wedding thing, you'd better start learning some things about Harvest. And I think you might want to start at the lodge. Everything in Harvest seems to revolve around this damned lodge, this Order of the Harvest Moon. They're responsible for this insane bake sale that's coming, and for the Harvest Blood Drive, too. When people talk about the Lodge, it's always in this hushed, reverent tone. Mom keeps telling me that women can't join, but she keeps pressuring me to get you to join. She's not the only one who wants me to sign on with the Lodge. That's cutting. probably the worst thing you could do. You think the Lodge is some kind of trap? I think all of Harvest is a trap. That's true. Maybe joining the Lodge is the way out. Look, why not explore the town a little? I can't get out of here, but if I could, that's what I'd do. Maybe you can figure out what's happening here without going anywhere near the Lodge. You're really afraid of the Lodge, aren't you? I look at that building, all lit up at night, and I get scared. I mean, look at the damn thing! Seem like a harmless bunch of masons to you? I mean, it definitely looks like a Masonic Lodge. Come back and visit me soon, okay? Yeah, screw it. Let's go to the lodge. <laughs> we'll probably be told we can't enter. Only initiates may enter the hall of the Order of the Harvest Moon. Did you say something? I did not speak, but my mind touched yours. Telepathy? But how? 
Only those who seek enlightenment will want my attention. Do you hunger for true knowledge? What kind of knowledge? Forbidden knowledge, the forgotten pleasures, and pleasures as yet undiscovered. But such is not for the likes of you. That's sounding pretty kinky, dude. Not yet. You must first fill out an application to be considered for initiation into the mysteries. Applications are available at the post office. Postmaster Boyle disseminates them to the uninitiated. I do not sully my hands. Then I just fill it out and return it to you, or what? You may find it difficult to obtain an application. You will no doubt need to find some way to persuade Postmaster Boyle to give you one in the middle of the month, as it is against his rules. When you do, however, bring it to me. And if you are worthy, you will be put to the test. Made an awesome voice, but um, yeah, this whole thing's a little weird. Stop with the missile base. Okay, before I talk to this guy, are you telling me that the guard for the missile base is a man with no legs? Just check. Halt! Who goes there? Uh, they tell me my name is Steve. All right, the section 21. Keep your distance, son. I wouldn't want to have to blow your head off. That makes two of us. So you're the amnesiac, huh? Just another draft dodging ploy the way I see it. But at least you're not an alien. You see their ships every now and then. Sometimes swell bags one in the woods. Who are you? Colonel Buster Monroe. Commander of the Harvest Nuclear Missile Installation. Keeping America safe from those who would dye our flag red, white, and pink. These are nuclear missiles? Goddamn right they are. Every one of them ready to rain death on the Ruskies. All I gotta do is hit the button and blammo! The price of vodka goes through the roof. Along with the vodka. Well, I suppose you have... Okay, then. You know... Safeguards against accidents? Safeguards? Don't be such a weak sister. There are no safeguards. This is the 50s. Then you have sole control of the, uh, missiles. That's right. Been in charge here since WW2, when I got my lower torso shot off in the war. Those panty wastes in Washington wanted to stick me behind a desk. To hell with that! They owed me. I left my legs in Dusseldorf. They owed me. Of course, they felt that after the trauma of having to crawl from Germany to England <laughs> trailing my intestines behind me, I was too emotionally unstable to continue in the military. That's why they gave me this nice cushy job and put me in charge of the nuclear missiles. Yeah, that, that, something about this is not up here. You say before you came to harvest, your lower torso was shot off in the war? That's right. I was behind enemy lines. The night was dark. The rain wet. Plastique I was supposed to rig the bridge with, precariously sandwiched between my knees as I crawled in the muddy mud. I didn't see the Jerry taking aim at me with his machine gun until half of me was flying through the air. With a quick spray of bullets in a straight line, it shot my body clean in two. My lower body landed at that Jerry's feet. I can still hear him laughing as I started crawling in the general direction of England, calling behind me in broken English. My friend, where is your legs? Looky, what have we here? Some legs? Hey, did they never lose some legs? I'll never forget looking back over my shoulder. And seeing you in the crowd doing the <laughs> gang gang with my legs! 
<laughs> a few weeks later, with only my compass and a pair of nylons, I made it back to safety. Now the Krauts are our friends, and the Kami bastards are our enemies. But even so, there's at least one crowd out there that I'll never invite over to Sunday dinner. I don't even... <laughs> Wrote this shit. Harvest is a fine town, steeped in traditional American values. But that lodge, well, it makes me suspicious, don't mind saying it. They've got their fingers into everything around here. Like a certain red commie bastard menace, which shall be nameless. Read me wrong, mister. I think you should join the Lodge, infiltrate it, and report back on any Red sympathizers. Your report could affect my decision on what I've got to do. Frankly, all these questions are making me a little suspicious of you. Maybe you're one of those pink-blooded Americans. Can you give me any reason why I shouldn't shoot you right now? Right, huh? Your average commie bastard is always only too ready to hide behind the Constitution. Real Americans waive their rights for the common good. Would you? I just might get me shot, but <laughs> Spoken like a true pinko. Oh my god! Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I just ended the world! What the fuck? <laughs> okay, I knew some weird shit was gonna go down in this game. <laughs> but, um... Wow. Okay, don't, uh... Don't intimidate the guy with... <laughs> had his torso shot off in World War II that has the nuclear <laughs> Oh, sentences I never thought I'd say out loud. Okay, um... Alright, let me, uh... Let me go ahead and go back and I guess I'll have to load my save and I'll... I'll go through the... the dialogue I've gone through already. I think I'm gonna avoid talking to the... the nut running the, uh... The missile base. And then, um, yeah, we'll see what we can do from there. So, uh, one moment, please. Okay, I'm back. I, uh, reloaded right where we stopped, uh, went and talked to Stephanie, went to the lodge, talked to the, the sergeant-at-arms. I am not gonna go to the missile base at this point. Um... I'll tell you what I am gonna do. I'm gonna save the game, but uh, I guess we'll go to the barber shop next. So, but we're gonna we're gonna save this game before some other nut job decides to shoot me in the face for uh, you know asking questions. Hold on, I had an option to. What's my inventory button? It is I. Okay, what do I have on me? Oh, I have the newspaper. I need to put that out for the weirdo kid that picks up the newspaper. Interesting. Didn't realize I actually had it in my inventory the first time. Okay, then. So first the occasional hairball call of the sword to tell if the sheep's alive or not. I mean, it has a hairball cough, and it's going bang. Fortunate extraterrestrial who, who journeyed hundreds of light years to wind up mounted on the barber's wall. <laughs> Oop, I didn't want to leave. Alright, who are these weirdos over here playing checkers, I assume? Howdy, Steve. What? Yeah. How that back, face? Mr. Pete Swell, Steve. Don't you pull my old leg now. 
change your mind about that aluminum siding? What are you talking about? I really think you should talk your father into buying some. He can afford it. And I can't stress enough the value of some really fine aluminum siding. Keeps it warm in the summer, cool in the winter, and it keeps out the sheep. Pastorelli ought to look into some, but I can't get him to understand a word I say. Pastorelli's a rube from way back. Ask Clem Parsons how he followed up with the alarm system in here. I'm a plumber. I could fix it for him, but he just won't listen. But, but you're a plumber. Well, I seen the end coming for the aluminum siding game, so I took a mail course and learned how to be a plumber. Now, there's a business that never lets up. You'd be surprised what people flush down the toilet. Nice to see you again, Steve. Hello there, youngster. They say them aliens I was telling you about, well, they came back last night. Cut another crop circle in my south field. How come I never see none of them saucers clam? Them aliens is wily, Pete. You don't cross the intergalactic void without learning a trick or two. You know what Pastorelli did? Yesterday, he gets an alarm system to protect his pole. <laughs> Only he don't know how to rig it, so now it's all awry. Pastorelli shelled out for an alarm system, all right, but he's too cheap to hire an electrician to hook her up. Dang idiot cross-wired it to the fire sprinkler, so now when the alarm goes off, it sets the sprinkler spray. Carnation! Aliens looking for intelligent life ought to stay away from this shop, sure enough. I think it ought to stay away from all of you. <laughs> well, son, the ways of the alien is a specialized area of woodcraft unknown to all but the wiliest sportsmen. What you gotta remember is, your average alien is smarter than your average human. So you gotta be extra careful building your blind if you want to bag one. You hunt aliens. Son, after nailing an alien, you can never go back to quail. What? You think you can get one of those at a swap meet? Phrasing? Line your blind with lead to fool their sensing machines. Lay real quiet and wait. Preferably in the woods around the nuclear base. Oh, they love messing around out there. Why not wait outside your field, Clem? Wait for them to come a carving. Oh, they do their crop doodles with zap guns, you darn fool. Don't you know nothing? Besides, ain't no place to put the blind out in the field. Now you listen to Clem Parsons if you want to tag an unearthly being. They cross the void, wondering what lies beyond, all the time not knowing that what awaits them is... Buckshot! Right. Anytime, Steve. Uh, yeah, you're all nut bars, and, um... Because, of course, he is. Straight lot, slot screws, I probably need a, uh, flathead screwdriver then, but you know what, we're just, just gonna get the hell out of here. Why? I... I clicked on the left side of the screen, and you're walking to the right like an idiot. Alright, let's go see the, what's in that there general store. Ew, That's nasty. Why is everything reek of rotting meat? Gein Memorial? Oh boy. Can I help you, dear? Who are you? This is Phelps General Store. 
So who would that make me? Maybe you need to go back to Gein Memorial and have Miss Whaley teach you about logic. I'm fuzzy on a lot of things these days. My memory's gone. Shaw, you always were a kidder, Steve. I'm serious. I need some help. Well, they say a sharp blow to the head is a good thing for amnesia. In which case, I'd recommend Miss Whaley again. Then again, they say a good scare can jog the memory. In which case, I'd advise you to visit the sergeant at arms over at the lodge. That man gives me the willies. Speaking of willies, how's your father? Don't know. Haven't seen him. Care to buy anything today? Just point to whatever you want. I'm a little hard of hearing. Let's see, what do we got? Ooh, an adult magazine. There's a wrench. Soup cans. And a coffee can. Um... Okay, I might have to censor something here. I don't know how about... How much for the wrench? I guess I'll just pay her first, but... I kind of feel like I'm supposed to buy the adult magazine. Nothing else has a price on it, but uh, let's go back and give her money. Well. <laughs> a girly magazine? Why, Steve, I'm surprised at you. I'd expect that sort of thing from Deputy Loomis, but never from you. He's always coming in here oogling the girly magazines behind my counter. Darned if I'd sell him one, though. I know his wife, for heaven's sakes. Well, will you sell me one? I certainly will, Steve. That kind of interest is healthy for a young fellow. <laughs> it steers him away from being a fireman. Okay, well, I've managed to acquire a girly magazine, which is probably not going to actually uh, do us any good here at the moment. Well, that didn't work. Okay, so I could probably come back and get the rent at some point, but I need more money. Good to know. Uh, ew. Yeah, let's get the hell away from that. Okay, so... I managed to get myself killed once and acquire a porno mag. Awesome. Um, sure, why don't we go to the band? Oh, there's more. Super building, police station. Let's go to the diner. It seems like a normal place, right? Box thinking about it. Hi, what's your name? Karen. What are you doing? Playing. My mom is working, so I gotta stay out of her hair. Wanna play? Not now, maybe later. Okay. Bye bye. Oh, Steve, what are you doing sneaking up on me like that? God, for a second I thought you were Mr. Johnson. Ah. <sighs> What would you like to order? Sure. And my name's Edna Fitzpatrick. 
I'm not the one with amnesia. Then you believe me. Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. Stop saying I guess I've that! Changed. I'm not kidding. Now, Steve, faking amnesia won't help anything. If you don't want to marry Stephanie, then don't. But don't play sick, for heaven's sake. I'd expect that from Karen, not an 18-year-old. Mr. Johnson has a... a liking for me. I call it a crush, but that's too innocent a word. He's a bitter man with too much time on his hands. He's never gotten over being rejected by the Lodge. And there's something unwholesome in the way he looks at me. I'm always glad when the sheriff comes in every day at noon. Sheriff Duane is such a dear man. And I don't just say that because he's my most regular customer. Every single day, rain or shine, he comes in here at noon for lunch. Sits in the same spot, too. That's at least an hour every day when I can be sure Mr. Johnson won't show up. You know, it's funny. Dwayne never comes in here with Deputy Loomis, but he frequently dines with Mr. McKnight. You know, the owner of the TV station. Sometimes he comes in with Postmaster Boyle, but somehow I don't think they're friends. Yes, what can you tell me of Though Postmaster I see them Boyle? together a lot, Boyle and the Sheriff never act very friendly towards each other. Almost like there's some kind of bond between them besides friendship, though what it might be I can't imagine. Maybe Sheriff Duane resents the fact that he's never been able to get into the lodge. Though that's not Boyle's fault. He just hands out the applications. He doesn't decide who gets admitted. The Lodge is the repository of all wisdom. You should join the Order of the Harvest Moon, Steve. And soon. Why? For God's sake, what is it about this place? The wheat ripens and waits not for the scythe. The farmer who waits too long, it were better that he used the scythe to rip his own stomach out than to stay his scythe when the wheat ripens. The harvest moon wanes and then comes winter. An empty belly, the body sun's belly, gurgling within or bloody on the ground. What does it benefit a man if he gains his soul and loses the world? You hunger. Feed yourself before it's too late. Oh. Edna? Steve. What happened? Were we talking about Boyle? Or was it Karen? You seem strange there for a minute. I'm sorry. I'm under a lot of stress. Running this diner all alone. Forgive me. Okay, that was odd. You've met Karen, my eight-year-old. Other than the diner, she's all I have. Stop by any time, Steve. Hmm. Hmm. I... I would say I'm starting to feel less confused, but that just isn't the, f the case. Alright, let me go back to the post office and see if... I can get any hint out of this guy. I'm getting that Sorry, son. No time to talk. Neither rain nor sleet nor snow nor hell shall keep the mail from its appointed rounds. Next time you post, don't forget the zip code. Just let me go in the back. I can I can do that myself, you know? No. Okay. I think we're going to call this one here. Um, at least something interesting happened. Uh, might have to see how many times I can get myself killed, provided I save beforehand. Because that was hilarious, but uh, completely unexpected. So, um, yeah. I might actually sit down and read the manual, because that's usually required for these games. Maybe they'll give me an idea. I, don't, I really don't want to look up like any sort of guide. I, wanna, I do want to try to figure this out. But I feel like I need to 
handle on what the hell I'm doing here. So I might do that. Um, but uh, anyway, I hope you are enjoying this. I'll definitely be doing more of this. This is probably going to be the, the weekend game, uh, at least until it's finished, where I feel like we hit a good uh, stopping point with it. So thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Stay tuned for more Shocktober content. Until next time, you stay classy, Internet. <laughs>